Hello, everybody. Um, today, we're going to be talking about API Gateway and Ingress Management. Uh, my name is Marco Palladino. I'm the CTO and co-founder of Kong. And this presentation is divided into different um, two different sections. One, you know, we're going to be talking about Ingress, understanding what Kong is, and how we can use Kong on Kubernetes. And then I'm going to be sharing my screen and pull up the terminal to practice a live demo. So we're going to be seeing it run, run it, running it in action. You see, um, just if, if you take a step back, you, you know, we're, we're entering a new world for software. And this is a new world that's been, we've been you know, uh, has been with us for a few, for half a decade now. You know, in 2013, 2014, with Docker in 2013 and Kubernetes in 2014, really we are building applications in a new way. And of course, as we, um, and uh, of course, as we are transitioning to, um, you know, to, to this new world, we're distributing our software and we're adding more and more services. Uh, we are decoupling our monoliths in more and more services uh, that are going to be, um, you know, connected to each other. And we're going to be deploying across, across the world, across different regions in order to be able to uh, to run modern microservice applications. And as we do that, of course, we gain something. We're able to decouple our software. We're, we're able to decentralize not just how we run our applications, but we're also able to decentralize how the teams are building these applications. But as we do that, and as we increase the number of services, we're also going to be reducing the simplicity of running everything in, in production. Um, of course, the monolith had many problems, but one thing the monolith had it was simple, you know, it's very simple to conceptually think about it. It's one thing, one thing only, we deploy it and it runs. Then of course, it's hard to scale, it's hard to, to deploy, it's hard to contribute, but it's simple. And as we decouple our services, of course that simplicity goes away, but we gain something else. It's dynamic, we can deploy much faster. We can increase and improve the business at a much rapid pace. Running all of this would be very problematic if we didn't have a platform like Kubernetes. And so Kubernetes comes to the rescue. We can use Kubernetes to deploy our new services, our new applications in a very, in a very easy way by leveraging the abstraction layers that Kubernetes provides us. Now, Kubernetes abstracts away our infrastructure, but all the workloads that Kubernetes is scheduling in the underlying virtual machines do not live under a rock. We still need to be able to access them from, from the outside. And in order to enable this use case, Kubernetes provides us with a few different resources that we could be using in order to make this happen. So there's three different ways. Actually, there is a fourth way, which is kubeproxy, and I'm not going to cover that today. But primarily, there is three different ways that we can access our services from uh, from the outside using Kubernetes. We can configure a node port, we can configure a load balancer, we can configure an ingress. So let's go through all of them and, and deep dive into why ingress seems to be the best way to allow external traffic to enter our Kubernetes cluster. So let's start with node port. Node port is perhaps the most primitive way for exposing uh, a service uh, in Kubernetes so that external clients can consume it. It's a very simple concept. With node port, we're going to be opening up a port uh, that's bound to the node API address for every service that we want to expose. That means if we have 10 different services, we're going to be having 10 different ports for each one of them. You know, it's quite primitive because of course it's bound to the node API address, uh, it's one service per port, and even the port range that we can use, it's quite limited. So if we want in production to allow clients to use, to consume our services within our Kubernetes cluster, perhaps it's not the best, the best way to do it. Uh, there is going to be another entity called Load Balancer, uh, which allows us to expose a service via um, effectively a Load Balancer functionality that usually the cloud vendors implement with their own load balancer implementations. So we have our services. Uh, we want to be able to provision a load balancer. Uh, and this will effectively create one load balancer per service. The problem with this is that the cloud vendors are going to be charging us uh, for every load balancer that we're starting. And if we do have many load balancers, this can get 
very expensive very quickly. Therefore, we're going to be looking at the ingress resource. So this is an independent resource. So this is not attached to our services, but it's independent. Um, whereas node port and load balancer were attached to the, to the service uh, object, to the service resource. This is in independent. Therefore, it makes this resource quite decoupled and isolated from the services. It's like this additional abstraction layer that we are placing on top of our services. And this uh, layer, this ingress, allows us to put all the, rou the, the, the routing rules for all our services in one place. So we don't have them decoupled across each service, but they're in a separate place altogether. The advantage of Ingress is, you know, Ingress, it's a spec, and there's going to be different implementations that are going to be running on top of the Ingress. Ingress abstracts away the basic routing functionality, but it still allows for Ingress implementations to be able to provide uh, higher value features uh, on top of this layer that we can then apply, uh, and we're going to see this in the case of Kong, we can, we can then apply on top of our services. Now, the ingress, um, you know, doesn't change the IP address. It's the same IP address. Uh, we can expose our ingress to pretty much consume any service we have inside of our cluster. Uh, like I said, uh, the ingress it's quite comes in quite handy uh, because it allows us to centralize all the routing rules in one place. Uh, therefore, we can decide from that one place what services we want to expose and how we want to go govern them uh, by using the ingress implementations that we want to deploy, as well as uh, in the case of Kong, this allows us to apply uh, some of those higher level features in a quite quite easy way. So for example, uh, by using a Kong Ingress, Kong, it's an open source and it's an open source API gateway. As a matter of fact, uh, it's one of the most uh, widely adopted uh, um, open source API gateway uh, in the community. Uh, you can find it on GitHub, of course. And we can apply authentication authorization rules. We can apply rate limiting rules, tracing, metrics, observability. And, and the, the interesting uh, thing about Kong in particular, you know, different Ingress implementations have different feature set. Kong uh, is uh, an L4 and L7 Ingress, which means that we can use Kong not just as your traditional, not just as an Ingress, used as an API gateway on top of our Kubernetes clusters, but we can also use it as a lightweight router to enable cross-cluster communication across multiple Kubernetes clusters. So if we have some you know, services running in one cluster, some services running in another cluster, and those services may not be APIs, HTTP APIs or gRPC APIs, but maybe, you know, for example, databases or Redis connections, whatever that is really, any TCP connection, Kong can route and enter within the cluster. It also supports K-native if that's something that you're adopting. So Kong makes no assumption effectively as to what the underlying service is. It can be an API that we want to expose to our external developers or internal teams in the organization. It can also be a service that we want to consume from another service in another Kubernetes cluster. So it's quite flexible uh, in the way it, it, it provisions uh, this ingress functionality. Kong, it's open source. Uh, you can deploy Kong on from GitHub. Um, you know, it, it has been running. Kong was created in 2015, and up until now, Kong has built not only adoption but also quite of a um, you know engaged community that helps us making the gateway better and better over time. It provides a hundred. Uh, you know, we not only Kong. Kong right now has 1.5 million instances per month. Uh, running across the world and, uh, you know, was born in 2015 from another company before being the CTO and co-founder of Kong. I was the CTO and co-founder of Mashape, which was the largest API marketplace in the world back in, in 2015. Uh, Mashape, uh, you know, was a marketplace that allowed developers to either find APIs to consume or publish their own API for, to allow other people to consume it. Um, and so, you know, we needed ourselves a gateway that could run on Kubernetes, that could run in a distributed way. And back then in 2015, there wasn't really anything like that. So we built it ourselves and uh, we built it in a very, in a very lightweight and fast, uh, and fast way. The performance, the ease of use, the performance and the portability of Kong really are the three pillars that identify the project. And, um, and, uh, and, you know, we built it for ourselves and then we have open sourced it in the Kong gateway adoption was so much faster 
uh, then the Mashape adoption, that in 2017, we made a call to divest the marketplace, Mashape, and focus fully on Kong. And since then, Kong has been, um, has been you know, growing. Uh, we have 180 plus core contributors, 50,000 community members, and it's being adopted by not only community, but also organizations from all over the world. So um, it's quite of a stable and feature-rich feature -rich gateway. And we also provide more than 500 plugins um, across the world that the community has built to enhance what the gateway can do. And of course, all of this feature set is available out of the box as an ingress on Kubernetes. I know that there are, I'm seeing there is um, some questions about service mesh and gateway. I'm going to be addressing those questions uh, later on uh, at the end of this presentation. Born in 2015 from Ashape, agnostic and Kubernetes native, you can configure Kong, we can configure Kong by using uh, Kubernetes CRDs. Um, you know, hundreds of millions of downloads. Uh, it's being used in production in mission critical use cases in pretty much every every industry. You know, everybody's moving to Kubernetes. Everybody needs an ingress. Um, it's built on top of Nginx when it comes to the networking, non-blocking networking IO. And we have extended Nginx with Lua and LuaJIT. So if you're familiar with uh, the Lua LuaJIT stack, uh, that's called OpenResty. OpenResty effectively is a framework that allows us to hook into the request and response lifecycle that are you know that are being processed by Nginx, and it allows us to extend it in, on a very extremely fast virtual machine implementation of Lua, uh, LuaJIT, um, and we've built we built an ingress and a service mesh. So I'm going to be talking about service mesh later on, um, data plane that can be deployed pretty much anywhere. In Kubernetes ingress, it's only one of the deployments. There is 20 plus different deployments. You could be downloading this on a Raspberry Pi and make that part of your cluster. So it's very simple, lightweight, but also quite extensible. Um, the concept of plugins, it's a very important concept in Kong. You know, Kong without plugins, it's, it's a pluggable, it's a pluggable framework, but it doesn't do much. Plugins really are the features and functionalities that we can adopt on top of our APIs. And some of these plugins are built by Kong, some of these plugins are built by the community, and there is a plugin SDK that are, allows pretty much everybody to build their own plugins if they want to do so. You can build plugins in, in Lua, in C, in Golang, so it's quite extensible. Uh, plugins can do all sorts of things. Plugins can provide authentication and authorization features. Plugins can provide security, traffic control, integrations with serverless, uh, integration with monitoring and uh, analytics solutions, transformations, logging. So there is, uh, I believe, more than 60 plus plugins that we bundle, that are bundled with Kong and are available out of the box. And then, like I said, there is a community of 500 plus plugins on GitHub that we could also be using uh, on top of our ingress. The Kubernetes Ingress Controller, particularly, uh, it's actually we've been the same. it was all together in one repository. We found out that that doesn't really scale much well uh, when it comes to the issues and pull requests and the project management. So we decided to separate the Ingress Controller aspects of Kong into a separate repository, uh, Kong slash Kubernetes dash Ingress dash Controller, uh, and we also provide a set of guides and tutorials that will help you getting up and running with setting up uh, a very flexible Ingress the Kong ingress on top of any Kubernetes cluster on any cloud, and then being able to apply plugins on top of it. So in the demo today, we're going to be seeing security plugins, we're going to be seeing uh, rate limiting plugins, we're going to be seeing observability plugins. So let's not waste any time, let's go straight into, into the demo. Um, but um, before I go, um, so uh, there is a question, does Kong support service mesh like Envoy or Istio, do you need? A service mesh with Kong. You, you can use Kong. Kong doesn't make any assumption as to what the upstream service is. It can be a service mm -hmm. mesh, and we have integrated natively with Istio and with Kuma. Kuma is a service mesh that's open source and has been donated two days ago to the CNCF uh, Foundation as a sandbox project, and um, and it integrates natively it natively with Kong. So you can use Kong as an ingress to enter a mesh. You can also use Kong as an egress for a mesh. And we can apply we can apply our plugins not just in the ingress capacity, but also in an egress capacity. So it can work pretty much with 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 all sorts of things. You can we can also use Kong in front of 
for example, AWS Lambdas. We can also use Kong in front of Kafka. Uh, we provide, you know, Kafka transformations to automatically transition a service to service request into an event based request. So the, the plugins that Kong provides are extremely powerful. Today, in the demo, for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to be showing some very simple plugins, but you can take this as a starting point to go and experiment with more plugins, you know, plugins that do request and response transformation, all sorts of things. Um, so today in the demo, I'm going to be sharing my screen now. I'm going to be running a mini cube cluster on my computer. I'm going to be deploying a very simple service that I'm going to be using for, for, for the demo, and I'm going to be deploying a Kong Ingress. Then once I have the Kong Ingress deployed, I'm going to be uh, configuring a few plugins on top of the Ingress so we can all see how Kong works with plugins and what Kong can do. And this is really meant to give you a look and feel of the project. So I'm going to be sharing my screen now. And if everything went well, you should be seeing my terminal. Um, right now, I'm running a, an empty cluster. So, you know, um, this is an empty Kubernetes cluster running on top of Minikube. There is really nothing going on here. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is deploying a simple service that we're going to be using for our demo. Um, first and foremost, uh, all these instructions, I'm showing my uh, browser now. All of these instructions can be found in the documentation. So in the docs directory, uh, we do provide um, a set of guides and tutorials that you can follow. And really it show, these are some, just some of the things that we can, uh, you know, that we demonstrate on top of Kong. Uh, but then of course, all of these, um, all, all of the plugins could be used uh, in an ingress capacity. So we're talking about many different plugins and many different integrations that can use out of the box on top of Kong. So let's go ahead and install a very simple service, um, I call it the echo service that's going to be echoing back every request I'm making. So um, this, um, this service is quite simple. Uh, it's a service, it's a deployment, and it echoes back pretty much every request we're sending to it, to, to the service. So if I, if I look at the namespace, I'm sorry, at the pods, we see that we have a new echo pod. And uh, if, I, if I look at the services that have right now deployed, this, we see that there is an echo service. So if I if I port forward uh, the echo service, we can make a few requests to it. And, uh, and as you would expect, this is a very simple service that just echoes back the request that I'm making, the request headers, the request body, and so on and so forth. So it's very simple and it's great for debugging purposes. Now, I'm connecting to this service using port forward, but that's not the point of this demo. The point of this demo is to use an ingress to be able to consume this service. So I'm gonna stop, I'm gonna close this window and I'm gonna stop the port forwarding and I'm going to be installing Kong ingress. So if you go, if we go back to uh, the, the homepage of our repository, there's different ways that we can install the ingress. Uh, we can just use, you know, uh, a YAML, we can use Helm, Helm charts. Um, for, for this presentation, I'm gonna use the YAML and this will create a few resources in our system, including a Kong namespace. So if we go and explore the Kong namespace, we see that the ingress is being created right now. Um, this is a blank, it's a brand new mini cube. So it's going to download the, the container and then run it. It shouldn't take that much, there we go. Now it's running, I'm ready, I'm waiting for it to be fully, fully ready, and there we go. So now that we have our ingress running, uh, what I'm going to be doing is applying a very simple ingress configuration that is going to be exposing our echo service on a, on a root, on a, on a slash path. So what this does, it's quite simple. I'm echoing back a configuration that creates a new ingress resource called demo, uh, we can configure annotations in, uh, in, um, in the ingress. In this case, um, I am going to be uh, stripping the path with Kong. I'm setting up an HTTP rule. Every request to uh, our root will go to a service name called echo on the service port. Quite straightforward. If I apply this configuration, we do create an ingress. And if I now expose, if I now go to the IP address of Minikube, which is here, 
I'll be able to access the ingress and access my service. So let's go there, and there we go. This is the service being consumed through the ingress. Like I said, this ingress doesn't do much right now. It's a simple ingress, it's a simple router um, that runs on top of an HTTP service. There is no functionality whatsoever running on top of this right now. Uh, but let's change that. Let's go ahead, for example, and look at some of, of the plugins that we can apply on top of the ingress. So let's say I want to protect the ingress with um, a key authentication uh, protection. So this allows us to effectively have an API key to, uh, to access our services. If I go on Kong, you know, the key authentication plugin, uh, like every plugin, provides a few things. It provides a name that's unique. In this case, it's the key of plugin, and it provides a configuration. I can configure many things here, uh, but I'm going to be using the simplest configuration I can possibly have for this plugin, and that is just a name. So I'm going to be creating a new Kong plugin resource. This ships with the ingress. I'm going to be creating, assigning a name to this resource, and I'm going to be specifying the name of the plugin that I want to use. I could be using any plugin. In this case, I'm using the key out plugin. And you can find the names of those plugins you know, by clicking on the plugin hub on you know, kongechq.com slash hub. But anyways, uh, let's go ahead and apply this plugin. So I'm creating a plugin configuration that it's going to be available to the ingress. But in order to make this work with the ingress, I also need to update my ingress resource with this new annotation, which determines what plugins are going to be running on the execution path of the ingress. And in this case, it's this new plugin configuration I've just created. So if I do this, uh, I update the ingress object. And if I go back and consume my service, this is not going to work anymore. So this is not going to work because the ingress will receive the request. It will determine that there is a plugin enabled, in this case, key authentication. And it will determine that I didn't set any key in my request. Therefore, I am not authorized to make the request. In order to be able to provision a key, I need to create a Kong consumer. A consumer in Kong, it's like um, a client or the, a developer. And a consumer can have multiple keys. So, you know, with, with Kong, we can implement quite complex, and this is just for key auth, but we can implement quite complex uh, rules when it comes to what consumers, what users are able to consume what services and how they're going to be managing their keys. So in this case, uh, in order to move forward, I need to create a consumer object uh, in, uh, in Kong, um, Kong consumer named Marco. And then I need to be able, I need to create a key that the Marco consumer will use in order to be able to consume the service. And this key, as you can imagine, is, uh, one second, this key is going to be a Kubernetes secret. So I'm going to be creating a Kubernetes secret Marco API key um, of Kong credential type key auth with the following secret key. The credential type, it's key auth because we want to create a, a, a simple API key, but it can be uh, you know, different authentication plugins are going to be having different types. So if I do this, I create an API key, and then I can associate the API key to the <clears throat> to the consumer um, to the consumer by updating the consumer object and adding a new credentials array that determines what keys belong to this user. So in this case, I want the Marco consumer to be associated with the key we have just created, and that is secret one through three. So if I do this. We have an ingress, we have a plugin, we have a consumer, and we have a key. So let's go ahead and now make a request with the API key, secret123, and this request will now work again. If I enter a wrong key, the request will be blocked. Quite simple. Now, of course, you know, being able to secure with an API key, it's probably one of the simplest things that we can do. Uh, another thing that we want to be able to perform on top of an ingress is visualizing, you know, what are all the requests that are, that are coming through. And for doing that, Kong provides um, a native uh, Prometheus and Grafana integration. So if you go to analytics and monitoring, we can see that it provides, you know, we integrate with, with a, a few different providers, but Prometheus is one of them. So what I'm going to be doing is creating a new monitoring namespace where I'm going to be downloading Prometheus and Grafana, and then I'm going to be collecting metrics from the ingress out of the box. So I create a new monitoring namespace. And then within this monitoring namespace, I am going to be installing Prometheus. 
and you know the values and the configurations all of these examples are available on the github repository for the ingress so i'm going to be installing prometheus and i am going to be installing grafana as well so if i do this uh obviously there is a new monitoring namespace uh then i can look into the monitoring namespace monitoring and i can see that we have a few different services running and initializing so this is going to take a while because it's downloading Prometheus and Grafana for my Minikube. This is where the fan on my laptop starts <laughs> turning on and increasing in speed. I can hear it. And uh, we're waiting for Grafana. And then once we have all of this running, we should also be able to see a few services here. And that is the Grafana service, which I'm going to be using to load to uh, load the dashboard and see our our, our uh, monitoring information. Okay, now Prometheus is running, Grafana is running. Again, this is not gonna work until I install the Prometheus plugin. The Prometheus plugin uh, is a plugin with name Prometheus that determines that I am going to be able to um, make all the metrics available to, to Prometheus. And so if I go back to my terminal, I'm going to be running the Prometheus plugin on top of, um, uh, I'm going to create this new resource, Conf plugin Prometheus, on top of my Kubernetes cluster. And if I do that, now we have enabled metrics collection from our ingress. So let's go and load the Grafana, the Grafana service. So if I go look at the services I have here, monitoring uh there's going to be grafana before i do that let me get the grafana i will extract the grafana password that we're going to be using later on to connect and login into grafana and now that i can do that i can port forward port forward service grafana monitoring namespace uh i'm gonna expose it on port 3000 so now that we have that i can go on port 3000 this will start Grafana, admin, the password is the password that we have retrieved from the Kubernetes secret. And I, I should be able to log in. And that's great. I'm inside Grafana right now. As you can see, Grafana, with the example I've executed, it ships with a Kong official dashboard. So I'm going to be loading this dashboard and we can see, we can see, obviously we can, we can see you know, the charts that out of the box we provide on top of the ingress. Now there is no request being made. So what I'm going to be doing is generate, simulate some traffic so that this gets a little bit more interesting in Grafana. So I'm just gonna be simulating some traffic in a, in a while through loop in my, on, my, on my terminal. And by going back to Grafana, uh, the last five minutes, we should be seeing um, you know, Prometheus, I, I forgot what's the interval, uh, but, you know, Prometheus fetches every X number of seconds that the metrics, and this is configurable. At one point here, we should be start seeing the charts. Let's see. Let's wait a few seconds. And there we go. We are seeing... We are seeing the first point coming up online. And uh, as the next interval kicks in, these points should become a line. Let's wait a little bit longer. Let's wait on just refreshing and refreshing. So as soon as it pops up, we're going to be able to see it. There we go. So these are uh, the request per seconds that I'm generating from my uh, while true loop on curl, and uh, it's uh, it it shows the the service in this case the echo service. It shows the bandwidth. It shows all sorts of things. Of course, now you know we have used the key authentication plugin. We've used the Prometheus plugin, uh, so we can secure and we can observe what uh, the traffic that we're sending to the ingress. Another common use case is to, you know, for an ingress, it's to rate limit the number of requests that our consumers can make. 
On Kong, uh, we have this concept of plugins that can be applied globally to every service or every consumer that we're configuring, but we can also apply plugins per a specific service. We can also apply plugins per a specific consumer, and we can apply plugins per a specific service and consumer. So in uh, your typical API management use case, we're going to be having consumers that can make, let's say, 100 requests per second, but then there's going to be some users or consumers that we want to whitelist. So with Kong, we can apply plugins for those kind of consumers to give them a higher limit if we want to do so. Now, the plugins can be applied, not just the rate limiting plugin, but any plugin can be applied on each combination of, of consumer and service. So if, if you're going to be trying Kong Ingress and you're going to be running this on, on your system, you, know, you, can, you can definitely experiment, experiment with, with all of them. Uh, so let's go ahead and install the rate limiting plugin. So I'm going to be stopping my um, I'm going to be stopping my uh, uh, request generator here. I'm going to be stopping uh, the port forwarding for Grafana, and I'm going to be running another stuff. And I'm going to be installing another plugin that will protect and secure our requests so that we're not going to be able to send more than five per minute. Uh, we're going to be using the rate limiting plugin. The rate limiting plugin can be quite complex in a sense that it's quite simple to get up and running with the rate limiting plugin. But if you want to even further customize the behavior, uh, we have lots of properties that we can choose from. So in the case of rate limiting, uh, we can choose uh, how many requests per second, per minute, per hour, per day, per month we want to use per year. We can limit by the consumer by credential. So let's say that we want to limit just the one API key, not another API key. We can limit by service. We can limit by all sorts of things. So we can also store uh, if we want the counters in a third party uh, Redis host, uh, or we also support Postgres and Cassandra as backend stores for Kong. For example, in the case we want to build a global rate limiting policy that can cross, that can be shared across different regions and different clusters. So I am going to be uh, installing my rate limiting plugin that's global. I'm going to be limiting by five requests per minute. I'm going to be applying this configuration and then let's make more than five requests per minute. One, two, three, four, five. And the system will then rate limit the request. As you can see, it's quite straightforward. Um, simplicity is one of the things that we put lots of effort in the past few years to make sure that Kong, Kong could be simple to get up and running with, um, simple to deploy, simple to scale. And, and of course, there is more advanced functionality and you're only getting exposed to that complexity when the time is right and when we really need it, uh, but not, not to get up and running with very simple use cases. I've been doing a demo, I've been running this demo for 20 minutes now, and we installed Kong Ingress, we installed a service, we set up an Ingress rule, uh, we created a consumer, a key, we have set up observability. We are now rate limiting all the requests. You can see that it, it's quite straightforward and, and Kubernetes native when it comes to configuring these resources. So um, I want to uh, focus a little bit on the service mesh questions. Um, you know, Kong can work on, uh, on top of a very simple service, a very simple API. It can work on top of uh, functions. Um, in the case of Kubernetes, it can work on top of Knative, uh, but it can also work with um, uh, with a service mesh. You know, with, with service mesh, service mesh is a topic that I've been very involved in uh, in the past year in the context of Kuma. Uh, we do support a sidecar envoy proxy that allows the Kong ingress to be able to perform, um, you know, gateway functionality on the ingress side, and then proxy the request to a sidecar envoy uh, proxy in order to be able to provision the right mutual TLS certificates that would allow the request to enter the mesh. You know, when we think of service mesh and we think of the concept of service mesh, it's quite, it's quite uh, you know, service mesh uh, as a very flat view of the world. In a service mesh world, there are services and services are, it can be anything that makes a request or receives a request over the network. And then we're, we're going to be having those service requests that connect the, these different services together. In the context of service mesh, any service any service that makes a request or receives a request, like an API, like a database, like Redis, it is a service. 
So the Kong Gateway, it's not any different from any other service that we're running in our system. The Kong Gateway will make a, will receive requests and make requests. So we can easily, so the Gateway is a service itself. We can easily deploy um, a Sidecar container next to Kong Gateway. And by default, we support Istio and Kuma. And, and by default, that whole flow, you know, from ingress to mesh, it's completely taken care of so that we don't have to worry about, about setting it up because it comes out of the box with Istio and Kuma. Also, you know, uh, we've been working with, um, and I've been personally involved with many service mesh use cases with larger organizations that are going to be running multiple meshes for different lines of businesses or for different teams. Um, you know, it's very, it's very hard to, to run one large mesh for everybody for a couple of reasons. We may want to start different meshes at different times. Therefore, um, you know, we don't want to enable too much. We don't want to require too much team coordination if they are all working on one mesh, especially if they're coming from different lines of businesses. And also we want to be able to enforce more, you know, security or more isolation across, you know, across different meshes for different applications. So one of the use cases that I've been seeing is using um, uh, Kong as these hop in the network that would allow to exit one mesh as an egress and then enter another mesh as um, in an ingress capacity. And so it, it is basically the gateway that not only allows us to e accept external traffic to come inside of the Kubernetes cluster, but also within the same cluster, it could be used as an internal gateway that allows us to exit one mesh and then to another mesh. And in, in between, being able to enforce user policies and API, API governance policies or onboarding policies to determine how those APIs are being consumed. If I am in a bank working for a global bank and I'm creating a banking application and there is another team building a trading application, for all intents and purposes, that trading team needs to be going through an onboarding process in order to be able to access the banking API. So even if we work for the same organization, I still want to be able to enforce rules on how that team is going to be using my system. And I want to expose just a subset of the APIs, not all of the APIs that are running in my banking app. And so the gateway use case, it's perfect for this because I can put a gateway internally, expose just the APIs that they want the other teams to consume with no dependencies whatsoever. You know, when we deploy a service mesh, we have a decentralized sidecar deployment that needs to be deployed alongside each one of our services. And that sidecar needs to be able to consume the control plane. And there is instances where I don't want, we can't deploy a sidecar or we don't want the sidecar to connect to our control plane because the control plane is quite sensitive and only our services should be able to get access to it. Therefore, I can use a gateway to exit one mesh, enter another mesh, or I can use a gateway to enter a mesh from the edge from a mobile client, for example, or from external developers that couldn't deploy a sidecar anyways, even if they wanted to, because we don't want to require them to do that and we don't want their sidecar to talk to our control plane. So anyways, to answer the question, yes, Kong can be used in front of any service mesh, in Eastern Cuba in particular. Kong natively supports Envoy as a sidecar proxy because Kong, like any other service, is a service in the service mesh. And, um, and also Kong can be used for more traditional APIs, as well as Kong can be used as a lightweight router to enable cross-cluster Kubernetes communication when it comes to pretty much any traffic, not just HTTP or gRPC traffic, but, but um, any L4 traffic. So it can be um, Kafka, can be Mongo, can be MySQL, can be literally anything. And we have users using Kong in all of these different capacities. So I hope that helps. Um, and I am going to be, uh, stop the screen share and going to the next slide. So today we have looked at different ways that we can expose our services in Kubernetes, uh, node port, load balancer, ingress. Uh, we focused on the Kong ingress controller. Uh, we've seen a live demo that allows us to secure and protect and rate limit and observe all the traffic that's going through the ingress. We went on a dissertation about service mesh and, uh, and that's all. So thank you so much. You can download Kong at kongechq.com slash install. I'm going to be connected for the next five minutes.
uh, just in case you have some uh, additional questions. Otherwise, you can find me online at uh, Subnet Marco on Twitter, or you can get involved with Kong and with the Ingress on our community channels that you can find on, on GitHub, you can find on konghq.com as well. And if you're looking for a service mesh that's quite simple to use, and um, it's vendor neutral, and it's, it's a CNCF sandbox project, you can now look at kuma.io. As a matter of fact, it's the first Envoy-based service mesh that has been donated to the CNCF Foundation, which is a Linux Foundation um, uh, entity. And, uh, and of course, the Ingress controller natively communicates with Kuma. And Kuma, uh, compared to, to, to Istio, it's much simpler to use. It's a turnkey service mesh. Um, it, it, it scales quite well across the organization by supporting multi-tenancy and multi-mesh support. And it can run on top of Kubernetes, but also virtual machine workloads. And as a matter of fact, uh, there was a new version of Kuma yesterday uh, that introduces a quite uh, quite scalable and flexible way to support multiple regions and multiple Kubernetes clusters within the same mesh. Of course, then you can put an ingress controller like Kong on top of all of this. So you have the full stack end-to-end -end ingress and service mesh all connected with each other. Um, the API gateway, so there is one question, how different is it from Istio? And, and this question was asked in the context of the Kong ingress uh, when I was introducing Kong ingress. The ingress controller, an ingress controller like Kong, um, it has been used in, the, in an API gateway capacity. And so the question is, you know, really, if we have to abstract this question away, the question is, what, what is the difference between an API gateway and a service mesh? You see, the API gateway and the service mesh are different kinds of deployments. Service mesh allows us to, so service mesh, it's more low level. Service mesh, it's more of a service connectivity concern. So we want, we're making requests and connecting services together within the application, and we want to secure that traffic. We want to encrypt it. We want to be able to uh, observe that traffic. So within the application, we're going to be deploying a mesh that does all of that. Now we want our application to be able to talk to other applications. We want to apply user governance on how the users are accessing our system. We want to be able to provide a developer portal and a catalog to enter um, our, our API in a very specific way. And we want to do that with a centralized deployment. So we do not want our clients consuming APIs to require a sidecar in order to be able to consume our services. As we know, in a service mesh, a service can consume another service only if both of them have a sidecar because the sidecar will assign the right mutual TLS identity to the request that allows us to make that request in the first place. If we have external developers outside of the organization, we don't want to require a sidecar. And, and, and most importantly, we do not want to require them to connect their sidecar to our control plane, which is a very sensitive topic. You know, it's a very sensitive uh, system in our infrastructure. And so we're going to be having an abstraction layer, an API gateway deployed in an ingress capacity that can perform, that can allow anybody to consume our services. It can perform user onboarding and user governance in a centralized way. It exposes only a subset of the APIs that we want them to consume. And then the ingress will enter the mesh to process that request. And you know, quite frankly, the tracing and the observability aspects of them can be federated together so that we can trace and observe this entire flow from ingress to service mesh um, you know, with, with a very tight integration. In the case of Kong, that integration is with Istio and with Kuma. Uh, there is another question. Um, can you help talk more about how Kong connect to different meshes? You see, we can use Kong as an ingress to a mesh, but we can also use Kong as an egress from a mesh. <clears throat> so if you want to, so first and foremost, exiting one mesh and entering another mesh means that we are going to be provisioning the right mutual TLS certificates that allow us to exit the mesh and then enter another mesh, which is most likely going to be secured with a different certificate authority. So what the ingress does, what, what Kong do in this case, it allows us to to funnel the egress requests through the gateway. And then the gateway with an, our Envoy integration will reprovision the mutual TLS to enter the other mesh. So effectively, the, the, the gateway really is this uh, hop in the network 
that allows us allows us to um, to exit one mesh and enter another mesh. I want to show you something. There is a blog post that I've written uh, a while ago, and it is about the difference between API gateways and service mesh. So I'm going to be showing my screen just real quick. Uh, this is the blog post that I've written. And, uh, and you know, here I'm talking about the difference between gateways, the difference, between, the difference between service mesh. But most importantly, at the end, I also show an example on how a gateway can be used to enter and exit different different meshes. So this is um, this is a, a very nice explanation. The blog it's called uh, the difference between an API gateway and a service mesh that I strongly suggest to read because it really clears all of this all of this up. Um, and, and Kuma was the uh, Kuma is the uh, cloud native, uh, um, the CNCF only Envoy based service mesh donated to the foundation that we can use uh, out of the box to create a mesh and then integrate it with a gateway like Kong. And you know, Kuma like Kong in Kong we have plugins in Kuma we have policies that do all sorts of things and there is an integration with Kong. And of course, we welcome more integrations with other gateways um, if if anybody wants to contribute to them. Um, yeah, so uh, I strongly suggest reading reading the um, this blog post. Uh, then there is another question. Um, would would English controller uh, be a complement or a replacement for the open open shift for English controller? It would be a replacement um, with Kong. We are getting an, a replacement of an Ingress controller. It's a different implementation that supports L4 and L7. It supports Knative out of the box. It supports API, a full cycle API management, really. And it also allows us to exit and enter different service meshes um, uh, built in either on top of Istio or Kuma within our system. So it's, it's quite feature rich. It's quite performant. And uh, it, it can cover pretty much all the use cases that normally we would need when deploying when deploying an English controller. So I, I strongly suggest to give it a try. And there is a very vibrant open source community that can also help uh, if, if you get stuck or if you have feedback or if you have questions. Uh, there's another question. Can you integrate with a certificate manager or do you have your own uh, Acme certificate and management controller? Um, it, it can connect with it can provision its own certificates. You can provision Kong Ingress controller with your own certificates. Uh, we also have integrations with Ashicorp Vault if you want to support a third party PKI. So I, I strongly suggest to look at the plugins because they provide different different ways to configure these all these different aspects. And of course, the official documentation, by the way, you can you, we, we can find that on konghq.com slash docs. So that covers pretty much all, all the different security use cases. We can not only secure with mutual TLS and encrypt everything that goes through the ingress. We can also integrate the mutual TLS of the ingress with a third party service mesh. We can also install on top of mutual TLS about 10 plus different authentication and, and, and authorization plugins like OpenID Connect, JWT tokens, you know, HMAC, API, API keys is one of them and basic authentication. You know, it's quite complex. Uh, on top of on top of Kong, and so we can also have different plugins for different services, which is pretty cool. That means if we have many different services in our running in our Kubernetes clusters, we can secure some of them with OpenID Connect. We can secure them some of them with mutual TLS only. We can secure some of them with API key only. So it is quite flexible on how we can manage this this entire this entire system, um, and you know also. Uh, you know, something that, uh, you know, makes me very proud about Kong, Kong is being used by hundreds of enterprise organizations in production for mission critical workloads. So when we're looking at Kong, we're not just looking at an open source ingress or gateway that does all of these things, but we're looking at an enterprise grade gateway that really can run in, in all of these capacities in pretty much any enterprise environment. So Kong can also sync up, for example, a very a more complex use case would be being able to manage multiple Kongs across different, across different Kubernetes clusters, across different clouds, and per, for example, integrate all of this with a with an on-premise data center. Kong can do all of the above. So this demo today was quite simple, but Kong supports all of these modes. As a matter of fact, um, it's it's quite of a portable system. And Kuma, the service mesh that we that we are also contributing to. It's also quite portable. It's a service mesh that can run on service mesh and Kubernetes, and we can integrate both both together 
by ab abstracting away the service-to-service -service connectivity between a virtual machine workload and a Kubernetes workload. So if, if you're looking for a service mesh that can span across all of your environments, I also suggest looking at Kuma. It seems like we're coming up uh, at the top of, uh, of my uh, time. So again, if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them online. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on GitHub. So keep, keep them coming. Thank you so much for coming um, to my talk. And uh, I hope all of these <laughs> is uh, clear and exciting enough for you so that you can get up and running with it um, you know, very easily. So thank you so much. Uh, you can find Kong at, again, konghq.com slash install. I'll, I'll, um, I'll see you online. Thank you.